On the prototyping board today on the breadboard, we have a SuperCat, 250 Farad and 3.8 volts, supplying a PFS154, which is theoretically asleep, although I'd like to check the current draw on that. And we know it's asleep because it's not outputting to this LED. The SuperCap is also supplying, via this positive rail and this green wire, this little capacitor. And the little capacitor is also, um, it's fully charged at the moment. That's indicated by the LED going. Now, what's going to happen, hopefully, uh, the PFS154 is asleep. It doesn't have an ADC on board. It's got this weird comparator, uh, step ladder comparator uh, going on. And if I've coded it properly, and that's a big if, then what's going to happen is that the comparator, which can also act as an interrupt, will wake this thing up and say, hey, um, there's no sun around, do your thing. So obviously this is to do with a candle project. So if I do that, there you go. So it's um, it's um, woken up, the sun's gone to uh, gone to bed, and so and all this is theoretically draining. Uh, the difficult thing has been to put it back to sleep again. Uh, and in fact, what I've uh, done at the moment is I'm just using only the comparator as an interrupt. I'm pretty sure what I'll do is I'll swap over to have the interrupt being a timer. So let's say that it wakes up every, I don't know, two to five minutes or something like that, and then it checks the state. I think that's what I used to have with the old A-Tiny uh, project, and I think that's probably more reliable. Uh, having said that, uh, plugging that back in again, the sun's shining again, this has gone back to sleep, happy days. So uh, it does work. It just doesn't reliably work, uh, and, and it really needs to. Um, and I've got some code ideas for that. Uh, I will take you through the code. If there's any code gurus out there, um, please have a look at uh, what I've done and go, yep, you should try this or you should try that. That would be really helpful. Um, but at the moment, I'm flying a little bit blind. There's not a lot of information around on how that uh, comparator uh, works. Um, I do know that uh, it's pretty uh, unreliable. One of the things that I might do, because it's a, uh, I think it's a 16-step step ladder, um, is that I might set it at one point for the wake up and another point for the going to sleep. And that might solve this sort of unreliability issue that it has had. Um, uh, having said that, it's worked perfectly through this video. But anyway, let's go and have a look at the uh, code and uh, we'll come back for some final thoughts. Right, let's have a quick look at the code here. Um, it's just got the usual thing with the pinout. There's PA3, which is where my comparator's hooked up to. Uh, then there's some libraries, uh, declaration of the whether it's sunshine or not, that's the Boolean. Little interrupt routine here, it says um, if the sunshine goes away, then set sunshine to false. Uh, then there's our check solar function. So basically it says um, we want, what is the result of the comparator? So initially it's set as a byte which we'll have a look at. So I've got GPCC. You probably need to have a bit of a dive on the old data sheet here, but basically what's happening is uh, that the comparator is enabled when it gets to this point, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can fiddle around with them, some other stuff, but that's pretty much the only important one. And then uh, where are we with the ladder? So, uh, yeah, we're probably about mid-range with that. I mean, we could probably put a zero here to be mid-range, um, and uh, basically that's just setting those last four bits uh, are just setting whereabouts on that ladder we are uh, on the uh, for the comparator and again the rest you can you can um, you know do some um, fiddling around with that but I haven't found that to be very useful a little bit of a delay time to settle and then we go okay so let's look at the result out of the comparator and also just use a mask here so that we're only getting uh, bit number six and bit number six is the actual result uh, and then we'll convert that to a boolean uh, and then we'll turn the gp uh, turn the comparator off a little bit of a delay again and then we'll return that boolean um, so this is where eventually the uh, candle um, routine will go but at the moment it just says hey uh, turn the um, PA4 on, give us some, some LED action. The sleep function, uh, disable the interrupts, uh, turn off the LED, set for a fast wake up, um, set your pins and your interrupts and enable, uh, and this is, uh, what's that, 7654 is to enable the comparator interrupt uh, and then enable interrupts and go to sleep. 
And then our main function is just setting PA4 as an output, and then it just continuously goes into this loop check to see if we've got um, sunshine or not. If there's sunshine, uh, if there's no sunshine, then do the candling, uh, and if there is sunshine, uh, then sleep. And so that is it, and the rest is calibration code. So um, yeah, that is pretty much the code. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't take an awful lot of um, uh, it doesn't take an awful lot of code to actually get it going. But yeah, I'm still not convinced that I'm doing it properly. So uh, like I said, if you've got any ideas on particularly this sort of bit here, then let me know. Let's do uh, compiling and uh, and then we'll go and see it uh, once again work and have a bit of a chat about that. Right, we've got our Padook programmer plugged in and a PFS one five four. Well, hopefully, let's um, let's have a look at uh, at what is actually in there. Yeah, a PFS one five four. We will um, we'll delete what's been there before, and then we'll program it. And there it goes. Oh yeah, one thing to mention too, it's, it is actually running at uh, 15 kilohertz. Uh, maybe part of the reliability is actually is, is to um, is to put that up a bit. And I've also set VDD at 2.8 volts, or it's more closer to 3.8. So you know, there's some little things to be done there. But you can see that it's um, yeah, it's a very small amount of code, and it's programmed up fine. So let's go back and have a look at that working, um, and uh, yeah, some final thoughts. All right, so what's all this about? Uh, I need three impossible things to happen. Uh, I'm maybe looking to switch the candle project over to a supercapacitor, but there are some issues. The first thing is that the QX5252, which is the heart of the project, outputs to 1.3 volts because all it needs to do is to charge one of these nickel metal hydride batteries. That's what's been happening in the past. And, uh, and that's been fine, I guess. Um, but I need it to actually bump that up to 3.8 volts. So can we do that? Not sure. The second thing is that let's say we do charge this one up, because at the moment I've been charging this one up using just my power supply. Uh, but let's say it is charged up via the QX5252. Will it be able to discharge enough to provide all night candling from the PFS154 and its three PWM channels? Haven't been able to achieve more than about four or five hours in the past. Really needed to go maybe 12 to 13 hours uh, or even more would be great. So that's the second impossible thing. The third impossible thing, which I've put a half tick next to at this stage uh, on the basis of the work we've done today, is to use a PFS154 with no ADC um, but a comparator to pretend to be an ADC and to make some decisions about whether or not we've got current in the circuit or not. Is the sun shining or not, basically, is what we're looking at. And, of course, there are still issues with that um, because, as you can see, it was, uh, you know sometimes it goes on and sometimes it does not. And the other thing is that um, uh, apart from... Uh, you know, what's happening at the moment, I might try and rewrite the code so that this thing is actually sleeping for, let's say, five minutes and then coming back and checking as opposed to using the comparators and interrupt, which is, you know, maybe not uh, not as reliable as what it could be at the moment. So that is what we're doing. Um, thank you for hanging around for so long. I'm going to say that's the circuit half working for this week and we'll see you next time.